for anyone really. The first and basic expectation is that Mr. Modi and his government would govern. And the first few actions give us very mixed signals. He wants peace in the subcontinent, that's very good. But his ministers seem to be raking up issues and creating confrontations which do not augur very well for his promise of good governance. As somebody who belongs to a minority community and has been agitating for the issues of all minorities and all marginalized people, not just Christians, I would say the first and basic issue is security and the freedom to be who we are, not to, for somebody to demand that we confirm to somebody else's definition of what an Indian should be or what Indian culture should be or what and how Indian people should behave. I think that is my second demand. My third demand is again because most of us, particularly the religious minorities and the marginalized, are very poor. People tend to forget that. And anything that goes to relieve poverty, to create employment, is something that is good for the country. And lastly, one of the most ugly laws of the last government was the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, UAPA, under which many youth, Muslims and Christians, and I suppose Sikhs, were put into prison. Now that act, I don't expect it to be scrapped, but I so want it to be scrapped. I am looking for reassurances. Mm. I'm not making demands. Mm. And I think the first signal I want from Mr. Modi is mm. that he is not going to meddle mm. in my identity. That he is not going to meddle in whatever little security I have. Mm. And that he will keep at bay all those forces who keep on threatening us day in, day out, who are such a part of the discourse during the election campaign and who have not let go mm. even after the BJP. Mr. Modi must do things mm. to reassure the marginalized people. Mm. The first few policy decisions he must make are to assure his non-voters, if I may put it that, mm -hmm. that they too are citizens and will get his undivided attention. Mm. That the concerns, their security, their identity mm. would be part of his concourse mm. and that he would not allow the Sangha Parivar and the other baggage that he brings with him to government to influence his decisions. <music> 370 debate doesn't have a right time. It's always a wrong time. Kashmir ascended to India on the basis of Article 370. At a time when religious minorities across the country need reassurance, at a time when peace with Pakistan is being negotiated, at a time when signals have to go to the people of the Kashmir Valley that they are very much a part of India as citizens of India. This is not a debate we should be undertaking. Some people in Udhampur may have slightly better options, but we are talking of Kashmir, which has the valley in it, which has the plateau of Ladakh in it, and we have Jammu with a very mixed population. Who are the stakeholders? Every single group is a stakeholder. The BJP and the RSS of Jammu are not the only stakeholders. And I think this is important to understand. Nothing. I expect nothing from her. Okay. I, in fact, am one of those who wants the ministry scrapped. Almost consistently, almost all the ministers of health ministry have done nothing for the minorities. And because most of the, all the ministers have been Muslims, I don't think anybody, any one of them has done anything for the Muslims either. As a Christian, I know for a fact they have done nothing for us. I would say government should make the National Minorities Commission a statutory commission on the pattern of the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes commissions. That would be far more effective. They should strengthen other instruments, the Maulana Azad Foundation. They should strengthen other institutions and let it be. It was created to accommodate people and to sort of appease people. It has served no useful purpose.